Hey everybody, Bryce Kuhn here, and we are back with another Swarm Talk episode. We can't wait to talk about this one. Should get some good views and also should get some good conversation rolling as who should start at quarterback as spring ball nears for Georgia Tech? Haynes King or Zach Pyron if he's healthy enough? We'll talk that and more. Kind of an early preview on this episode of Swarm Talk brought to you by the Crowded Booth. How in here and make yourself feel at home. Coming on the crowded booth with Bryce Coon. What's up, everybody? My name is Bryce Coon. So glad that you are watching on this fine, fine day. If you're watching the month of February, well, happy February. If not, we're gonna have football, folks. In the month of March, spring football comes back. Cannot wait to talk with you more and more about that. Hey, if you're brand new to the channel, you're saying, what is this? You're a Georgia Tech fan that has stumbled upon this. Well, hey, we just think that we're the number one Georgia Tech show on the internet. We've got some good friends that do other shows as well, but it's a playful jab at all of those guys. Love the work that everyone does with the Georgia Tech community. This is Swarm Talk. My name is Bryce Kuhn. If you don't know who I am, work for 24-7 Sports, previously covering as, you know, as late as December covering Georgia Tech, but have moved on and covering now now, the LSU Tigers, but hey, we still keep it rolling, still connected within the Georgia Tech uh, network of things, and so we're going to keep rolling with this show. And I thought today would be a great day to kind of pivot from our last episode that said, hey, what makes Georgia Tech special? Kind of sets the tone for, you know, what's going on to now and who should start a quarterback. Let's jump right in. I want to hear your thoughts as well, and I want to bring up something that's interesting because uh, you want to avoid this. And so it's more for a fan's perspective, but also what I think this coaching staff is going to do. Obviously, if you have not been sleeping under a rock, uh, you know that Haynes King, the transfer from Texas A&M, former four or five star, depending on which recruiting service you use, uh, this kid was highly touted coming out of high school, never got really the opportunity. Uh, he had some opportunities, but just never really was able to get into a rhythm out in College Station. He transfers to Georgia Tech. He's now in Atlanta. And this is something that as we kind of enter this conversation in the spring, uh, you know, it, it's really looking towards more of the fall when it's really this conversation I think is really going to take place. But there's never too early uh, of a time to look at it. Obviously, if you look at the quarterback room for Georgia Tech, Tech fans are all, all knowing who the quarterback, who some of them really want the guy to be, and that is Zach Pyron. Uh, you also have Zach Gibson there, a quality backup, I think, in this sense, too. But let's talk a little bit about uh, – let's take a look first off at the stats. And we're going to read some of these stats off to you. i got it over here on my other monitor uh, that we are going to read off of here. Haynes King last season, you know, seven touchdowns to six interceptions, a quarterback rating of 45.3, just through for 1,200 yards. You know, had arguably his best game um, in the, you know – loss against Florida, where he threw for 279 yards. Uh, his really best game was against Sam Houston State, where he played former Georgia Tech quarterback Jordan Yates in that one, now a running back, which Jordan Yates has hit the highlight, highlights of uh, and you know got a little viral after his video. But that's for another episode, another time. He was 20 of 31 for 364 yards, three touchdowns, two interceptions against Sam Houston State. Now, you may ask... So why do we expect a guy to come in and compete for a job when he was really bad at his previous place? Listen, I think that Haynes King is going to compete for the starting spot. There's no doubt about it. And here's why. When you're highly touted coming out of high school, a lot of people like to point when you struggle, oh, then those rankings were messed up. No, that doesn't mean the talent is gone. It just means how it was evaluated and how it would translate. Uh, that's the biggest thing when, it talk, when you talk about recruiting rankings. You're not denying the talent that the kid has at the high school level, but you're also saying to yourself, it's a risk because you don't know how he's going to translate. Haynes King has not made that seamless transition yet into the college ranks. So what makes me think that he could do it at Georgia Tech? Listen, the talent's still there. Obviously, as we all know, the funky throwing motion is still a part of his, uh, you know, the mechanics aspect, but is that something that Chris Winky can work with him on? Look, I don't think we can understate or overstate, really, the job that Chris Winkie did last year. Uh, it was not easy at all to see what Georgia Tech had to kind of go through in the sense of 
look, you, you don't know who's going to be playing quarterback today. I mean, you all remember week to week it was a mystery. Jeff Sims was hurt. Was he hurt? He wasn't going to dress out. Then you get to a situation where, you know, Zach Pyron, you heard rumors he was lighting it up on the, you know, practice team and the scout team. What does he want? Does he can take that jump? And then you comes to realize that maybe he really wasn't ready for it, but Chris Winkie did such a great job, and so to give credit to Zach Pyron, they were able to work together to kind of, you know, escalate the process to further along the process so he was ready in a shorter time. Zach Gibson, I mean, after the Virginia game, teams, you know, players didn't, you know, fans, I should say, didn't really want Zach Gibson to be the guy anymore. And he comes back in the Georgia game at the end of the year and fights and gives, you know, the, the – two-time defending national champions, really all they could handle for one half, which was, I think, more than a lot of people expected heading into that game. So it circles back to Haynes King in the sense that why not him? If this kid is as talented as recruiting evaluations, such as the one that I'm wearing on my chest right now, suggested he was when he came out of high school, if the talent's there and the work ethic, which you know, there's no knowledge that we wouldn't be able to think that it wouldn't be there for him to get this second opportunity. Maybe a fresh start's what he needed. Maybe a change of scenery is the best thing that Haynes King needed. See, now no longer he's in the spotlight. He's not in the limelight of a Texas A&M, an SEC program, a program that recruited at a phenomenal rate, and whoever was going to be under center in College Station last year needed to perform. There's not that kind of pressure right now at Georgia Tech. Is this a program that's looking to turn things around? Yeah. Is it a program that needs to win some games? Yeah. But there's a couple things going into this where it's not the same as a program like College Station who's in the top 10 of your recruiting rankings every single year. So I think in the sense where it's more of why not? Why can't Haynes King make this jump? I don't, I don't, I don't think it's as far-fetched as people may think. Yes, are there issues? No doubt about it. He's got to be able to fix this throwing motion. Chris Winkie can work with him. The decision-making needs to be a little bit better. We've heard, obviously, and if you've watched any of his film, it takes him. he can run the football. So there is the object of that he could be a dual-threat guy. Not a pure runner, not a Jeff Sims, you know, very extraordinary athlete. But I think that King can provide some things on the ground. Now, I want to go back into this thing because I wanted to see, you know, hey, the two common opponents that Texas A&M and Georgia Tech shared last year, or the one common opponent, is Miami. Haynes King did not play in the Miami game, so therefore we can't really see how that would have matched out. But I think kind of talking and kind of ending this little part about Haynes King is it's more of, well, why can't he? Like, what's stopping him? I think the change of scenery is huge. And I think we also have to be honest with ourselves and realize that the ACC, the competition he's going to be facing, the talent level is not going to be nearly as what he was facing week in and week out in the SEC. Uh, he's not going to be playing Alabama's defense. He's not going to be pay- playing LSU's defense. You know, this is a guy that uh, is going to be facing lesser talent on a week in, week out basis. That's not an opinion. That's literally, if you go look at the scouting reports, if you go look at the recruiting rankings, The SEC teams are accruing more talent, and most of us know that. We understand that. The second part that, you know, could play a role in this is at some points when Hanks King was playing well, he was playing with some really, really good athletes. Uh, I think this is going to come down to the job that Buster Faulkner can do. How can he develop Haynes King, and what can King become? Uh, Six foot three, 205-pound quarterback. I mean, that's the makeup of a quarterback you'd love to see at the college level. And one of the big reasons he was so highly in the recruiting rankings was because he had the physical gifts, the physical tools of of an NFL quarterback. Now, has he lived at the billing? No, he has not. But he still has time, obviously, with years remaining in his eligibility. Now, let's flip it here, and I want to talk about Zach Pyron, because Zach Pyron, let's just get this out of the way. The situation that he stepped in was one that I don't think anyone would have been really, really ready for. Now, look, Pyron gave lots of praise to the coaching staff, lots of praise, you know, I think, to just everyone having him ready in the team because it was certainly was something that when you look at how he was able to deliver at some points, I mean, 565 yards in just really three games of work, Miami, Virginia Tech, and Florida State – Admirable job. And I think that we saw the heart of what Zach Pyron did in in this game, in those games. We saw the grit, the determination he had. 
Look, we all remember the touchdown against Florida State at the end of the game when really and truly it didn't matter, but it mattered to him and it mattered to this team, and I think that won over a lot of the hearts of the fan base. Pyron showed a lot last year that obviously he should be in consideration and he should be uh, one of the candidates for the starting position. However, here's my problem with all of this. There's a lot of fans that come out and say, well, Zach Pyron should be the starter. I mean, no one's better than him. I mean, are we sure? We have to remember to remove ourselves because it'll pull on those heartstrings of seeing a guy give his full out effort. And look, I'm for it. I love to see what Zach Pyron did with the football, the decision making. He's going to get better. The footwork, he's going to get better. He's going to get comfortable. Maybe he even takes a step up. And I'm not sitting here and saying that Zach Pyron's not going to be the starter in week one. I'm also not saying that he's, you know, he's going to light up the, the world for Georgia Tech in 2023. But what I do think is, is that a lot of people I see on social media, whether it's in a Discord or it's on Twitter or something like that or Facebook, it's this recognition of, well, Haynes King was really bad at Texas A&M, and Zach Pyron made us feel really good last year, so Pyron's got to be the starter. And I want to caution because you would enter a situation where you would just be handing the keys, not saying this is what the staff's going to do. I'm just saying from a fan's perspective, you would be handing the keys over without a lot of competition. And we've seen that over the past three or four seasons where there was never really any true competition for Jeff Sims. Jeff Sims was handed the job year in and year out uh, without much competition around him. I think there really will be a true quarterback competition this spring. I think both players will be better for it. Now, I said this last year with Zach Gibson, Tyson Pumachan, and then Zach Pyron. I thought last year would have been the year we saw a real quarterback competition. Uh, it was a revolving door due to injuries, due to other things as well. Zach Pyron did a fantastic job stepping up when his team needed him and giving them the best chance to win. And I don't think that anyone could say that if he – started week one against Louisville and Mercedes-Benz, anyone would be really upset. I wouldn't be upset. I love what I saw out of Zach Pyron. I just think that we have to understand that there's going to be a quarterback battle. There's going to be a sense of where one guy might win out uh, over the other, and it might not be Zach Pyron. And if it is Haynes King, Pyron's going to be better for that as a backup. He's still very young. I think that it showed, too, that this is a guy who really wanted to be at Georgia Tech with all the movement and all the rumors swirling around. It's a guy who stayed because of his relationship with Brent Key being the main recruiter for him out of Alabama. I really do think that both of these quarterbacks are talented. I think that Haynes King is going to bring something where he has a chip on his shoulder like we talked about. It's going to be something new. It's going to be a rebrand for him, and maybe that's the best thing. You know, if you get into fall camp and Haynes King is lighting it up and Zach Pyron's a little slow, I don't think it hurts either to say, all right, King's the starter. If it's vice versa, you haven't lost anything if Zach Pyron's going to be the starter either. Like I said, I just want to caution because I think the idea that because Zach Pyron did what he did over the last three games, you could look at it two ways. And this is where I'm going to lose some people on this. Zach Pyron stepped in a situation that nobody would envy. In, this, in, in the idea of it was a, uh, you know, a kid that had really never worked with the first team having to come up and do that. Give credit to him and his hard work and give credit to Chris Winkie and the rest of that offensive staff. But I think what we also have to understand is quarterback play at Georgia Tech has been so bad over the past four years, you have to ask yourself and you have to be – you have to. Because for the best decision of the team, you have to say – was Zach Pyron really lighting the world on fire, or did he bring some consistency, which is still a good thing? But would we be capping that if, if Haynes King could come in and do more? And I think that's the question you have to ask yourself. If Haynes King can do more and shows more, he, needs, he should be the starter. If not, Zach Pyron's there, and you know he can take a step up, and this is a kid that I think is going to be you know, a really, really good quarterback – uh, for Georgia Tech in the future, whether it's 2023 or not. But just don't pigeon your whole self, don't pigeonhole yourself into a situation where you're saying just because Zach Pyron played well, he showed a lot of heart, and he made me feel good about Georgia Tech football again, that he should be the starter. I think we should be open to the idea that this is a real quarterback competition and that Haynes King could come in and win the job. And if he does, that's the best thing for the program. 
You also have a guy like Zach Gibson that's going to push for the job. I believe that he will. He's a competitor. Is he as naturally God-given talented as the other two? I don't believe so. But I think this is a kid that uh, really wants to work his tail off and try to prove that, hey, he, he can be a name in this conversation. It's going to be really interesting to see kind of how this all folds out. Zach Pyron obviously playing against Miami, Virginia Tech, and Florida State. How he rehabs and comes back healthy is going to be something more interesting to watch. But like I said, just caution. Don't pigeon, don't go ahead and pencil hole, uh, you know, Zach Pyron into the job right now. There's a real quarterback battle brewing. And I think for the first time in four to five years, we're going to see a real battle where there's not favorites played, where there's not a situation where uh, because so-and-so is recruited by this person or NIL opportunity or because of a recruiting ranking, someone's going to get a, you know, a, higher, a higher opportunity, a much longer leash perhaps. That's happened in the past. I don't think that happens in the situation. I think the Georgia Tech quarterback room – is finally on stable ground. I said it last year, I thought it was, and we ended up being wrong. I think a lot of people felt like the room was a little bit better last year. But I think this year you finally have guy, two guys that you feel like could comfortably start for you, and you would be okay going out there with it. It's going to be really interesting to watch. I love both of these guys. I like Pyron's makeup. And don't get me wrong, folks, I'm not sitting here saying just because he made you feel good, you shouldn't want him to be the starting quarterback. That's all more reason to want the starting quarterback and him to be that. But there's a lot of guys that love the program they play for that don't need to be starting. And that's at Georgia Tech. That's at other places. That's everywhere. So I'm excited to see how this kind of folds out. I hope Haynes King gets a real shot. I think he's talented. He had that you know star rating for a reason. He had the hype coming out of high school for a reason. It's just he's got some untapped potential that we'll see if he can capture on the flats under Chris Winkie and the rest of the staff and Buster Faulkner. It's going to be really cool to see how Faulkner works with both quarterbacks and how he can develop them into the next stage of their career. My name is Bryce Kuhn. We're talking quarterbacks. We're talking Georgia Tech at least once a week leading up to spring practice. We're going to be talking more and more, though, and I can't wait till we get to the regular season and we get back to doing some live shows. It's going to be a ton of fun. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to join the Discord in the link down below and head over to our website, thecrowdedbooth.com, completely free for you to subscribe to it. All it does is it takes these episodes right into your inbox right into your email inbox, and you just click it from there, and you can watch it right there. If not, I want to encourage you to like this video. Let's see if we can get it to 100 likes, and comment down below. What do you think? Haynes King, Zach Pyron, what's your take on the situation? If you think I'm completely wrong, let me know. If you agree with me, let me know down in the comments below. Appreciate you for so much for watching. This has been Swarm Talk presented by The Crowded Booth. Coming on The Crowded Booth with Bryce Coons.